This NFL Picks Week Two edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. WinBet is now live in Colorado, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Tennessee, Virginia, and Arizona. From boosted parlays to in-game odds on every major sport, WinBet has what you need to win. Sign up today to receive a one thousand dollar risk-free sports bet. Download the WinBet app now or visit wynnbet.com and start winning today. We're also brought to you by PropSwap. America's number one app to buy and sell sports bets. Use promo code SGP on your first deposit and receive up to five hundred dollars in bonus cash. That's PropSwap.com promo code SGP. We're also brought to you by PicksWise. PicksWise is the number one app for free sports betting picks, props, and parlays. Download the free PicksWise app now to make your next bet better. We're also brought to you by Odds Crowd. Are you the best football better in the United States? Odds Crowd challenges you to prove it with their free-to-play fantasy betting contest. Odds Crowd gives away hundreds of dollars in weekly contests, including the $100 SGPN exclusive free roll contest. And of course, don't forget to download the SGPN app. You're home for all of our free picks and podcasts. Ooh, welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Well, it's uh, it's NFL week two. It's already week two, Sean. Week week one in the books. Already week two. Uh, and uh, yeah, so you know, let's just say I knew a guy who knew a guy mm. who had a boat and yep. some and maybe a construction company had okay. some leftover chain link fence with some you know maybe some concrete, some rebar, oh. something that's heavy. Some maybe if you wanted an anchor, I, I just hope Jason Garrett likes to go fishing. Oh, t- like uh, the big puss, like the, the way big puss went out there. The problem is right. And, and I'm a glad good boat you're trip. addressing the giants early. Cause we'll get there early and off in Thursday night game. The problem is Joe judge clearly likes him. Why would Joe judge not get rid of Jason Garrett after week one? Does he not have control of his coaching staff? All right. So if you, if you dial in the X files music and you listen to what I've been saying, Joe judge brought in young coach ownership, not sure if they can trust him. So they surround him. They keep Gettleman around. They surround him. They put Jason Garrett on the staff. Things don't go all that well. Joe judge probably points out to ownership that mm, the offense, I don't know. I don't know how much, how overt he was, but we started seeing Gettleman signings being cut. That tells Mm. me judge starting to gain some power in the front office. (laughs) Now, this first game is a great example. Now I hope they don't lean into the crutch of, oh, well, Denver has a great defense. Oh, well, Washington has a great defense. But at some point, seven yard stick routes and running into the line of scrimmage on a dive play every first down. <laughs> but you act like this is new. That's this is why I was down on the team. They don't have Go fuck yourself. offense. They well, don't okay. they don't hold on a second. What? What am I gonna do? Come into the season being all pissed <laughs> off and angry that this guy's a bag no, of dicks? No, just say to no. say they they're not gonna be what good until I they say? get rid of Jason Garrett. I, I said I gotta see change. I said I will very quickly turn heel if I don't oh, see change. Nice. And as I was watching that game, are you all heel? Thirty feet behind you in the sports book, you probably heard me yelling because mm. whenever they went to that three wide receiver look, that spread them out look up you know, speed up the tempo of the game a little bit. Things looked all right. And God damn it, Sean, the metaphorical significance of me watching Pat Shermer (laughs) shred this giants defense with his efficient (laughs) and optimized offensive game plan. It was horrible. It was horrible. So yeah, the NFL can go, can go fuck itself right now. Uh, I'm I'm here. uh, So I don't get fined. And because I have some fucking lead pipe locks Let's for week go. two. Well, Ryan, you know what you could use if you got fine, you can just grab some of that free cash over at winbet.com. I mean, first off, they're hooking you up with a thousand dollar risk free bet. We're hooking you up with some winners. Sure, the locks weren't off to a great start, but that's why there is week two. No week one overreactions and a couple specials over at WinBet, including you get down on college right now. They have Alabama money line at plus 100. They also have a fun player prop, a bonus Kyler Murray to score either a passing touchdown or rushing touchdown. Hmm. That's also plus 100 stuff. You only get over at win bet legal now uh, live in a ton of States head over to win and start 
winning today. L F G. Kramer, I, I think it would be cool. Uh, real quick before we hop into the picks. No, I, I feel like I nailed that. I feel like I nailed that. It was the right amount of saltiness. Yeah, you get you with, with a nice closing uh, a bit of optimism. <laughs> hmm. Let's take. Pretty it. proud of that, actually. Yeah. Thanks for noticing. <laughs> I, it's interesting because everyone says, "Oh, let's not overreact. It's just week one. It's just week one." And I think it's fun to go back and look at some of the 2020 week one scores and see if it actually was there some overreactions. What were some teams that we were freaking out? Jags won a game. Jags won their only ha- game of the has season. Has happened since 27 to 20. <laughs> That's that is a hilarious streak. Although you know we called that, we were all over the Jags there. That one didn't seem shocking. Like it was just such an obvious letdown game. No one was buying into the Jags. No one was hyping the uh, the Jags up. Uh, obviously, the Eagles lost by ten at Washington. That we were was hilariously a, on a Minshew though. Yeah, we were all over Minshew. <laughs> that worked out well in our favor. Let's go. Uh, what else were some of the bigger results? There weren't a ton of blowouts. There was the Ravens beating the Browns thirty-eight to six. The Ravens ended up being a good team. Saints uh, winning thirty four to twenty three over the Bucks. They ended up being a uh, a good team, obviously. Steelers beating the Giants twenty six sixteen. They Are ended you, up being a good team. Is the thesis that we need to adjust quickly and not uh, rest on our laurels with these teams, or or are you saying that week two is overreaction Sunday? Well, I I I think both things can be true, and it's worth taking a look at them. I I think when you go on the I road like and win by twenty six points. That is not a that's not a freak game. What I'm what I'm showing you here is not a lot of teams winning by 26 points on the road in the NFL period. So even if the Atlanta Falcons aren't that good, it still is a great sign for the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, absolutely. And real quick, just note because you mentioned that Jacksonville game that that combined with a couple of other outcomes knocked out 42 percent of the survivor pool. Wow, that was week one last that year. That was wild. What's uh, what about week one? This year we saw. Now it, it didn't seem like it was going to be. You know, some teams like the Packers maybe a little shocking. Uh, my Texans winning. That, that I think some people had the Jags, but 16 percent falling out uh, feels like a win. That that di- you know we didn't get the Niners or anything fun like that. So, uh, but we survived, of course, by the. Uh, I don't know by the skin on the cr- the scruff <laughs> of Gronk's neck, the hair on his chitty chin chin. Yeah, that was a bit of a sweat. I mean, when Godwin fumbled into the end zone, you knew the minus eight that we had was oh. cooked. Bit of bit of some outlier situations there, and and we'll get to it when we talk Tampa Bay and Dallas on both sides. I mean, Dallas's kicking game really let them down. Tampa Bay's fumbling uh, seemed a bit of an outlier there. Got some bad breaks on some tip balls there for t- from Tom Brady. So, lot to get to. Kramer, uh, what? A, oh well, we also have to discuss uh, which TVs we have. Eight TVs mm. in our studio, aka God's eye. There, unfortunately, is nine early games in the 10 a.m. West Coast slot. What the slot? How's the slot? Now, obviously, the Eagles will be on the primary TV, unless unless you can make a case to Let, get rid of two I, games and put I, it on I red thought, zone. I thought this is the move. I okay. think we talk through the games. And when we're done with the the slate, we talk about how they'll be arranged. Okay, that's what I think we should do. All right, Eagles definitely going to be on the one. Team. Eagles can be on the one. And I my my two cents. I think we 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 look to cancel two games and mm. add a red zone. Red zone is good, uh, just because it keeps you. It's nice to have a red zone safe space when you're looking at eight TVs. Yeah. You know, you can just go back to red zone. It is kind of hard to watch eight TVs, but again, that's why I'm a well, professional handicapper, Ryan. Th- we've never done it for NFL, no. So to to be, I don't know if anyone in the world has ever done it. So no. First, uh, what do they call it? First descent. First yes. descent. This we first are the launch. canary in the coal mine we, going down into week two, testing out our setup. Obviously, we were out in uh, Las Vegas there. All right, before we get to the games, obviously, want to shout out PropSwap.com. Uh, I mean, again, buy and sell real sports betting tickets. Adrian Kennedy's checking out us in the uh, YouTube chat, friend of the program. He's a Vegas local, so if you live out in Vegas or if you're out visiting Vegas, AC, wherever all these uh, different states, you can buy tickets. Goes up in value. Get on Prop Swap, sell it on Prop Swap, guarantee yourself a profit. Lock that in, and also they got a sweet, sweet sign-up bonus. Use that promo code SGP. 
And again, go for two. You know, give yourself two tickets. I, I'm kicking myself. I only have one Nick Sirianni Coach of the Year ticket. Wish you're I had. You're welcome. Wish I. Thank you, Ryan. I wish I had two because then, I mean, even now, it's it's I. The ticket was fifty to one. You can't get anywhere close, Coach Sirianni, fifty to one. So tons of opportunity. Prop swap. It's where America goes to buy and sell bets. Let's go, baby. All right. I guess people want us to pick games, so let's pick some games Thursday night, five twenty on the West Coast. My Giants take to the road to take on the Washington Football Team, aka the Redskins. The look ahead was three; it's now three and a half minus one eighty on the money line for the football team. Giants plus one fifty. Forty and a half is the total. It's just exceptionally low total. <laughs> Gross. Uh, this is a you know if you've watched the NFC East. Closely over the years, there are certain things that just happen, and one of those is the, the the Giants generally get one, if not two, of their wins every year from the Washington Football Team. Twenty-two of their last thirty, in fact, Sean. Mm. Uh, and, and more importantly, they've been effective as a road mm. underdog <laughs> of late when they've sucked since 2018, 16 and four against the spread. Oh, they've sucked for a long time. Five that, and right? one against the spread against the division under Joe judge. So I, I think uh, my, what I would tell you as a giants fan is you don't take the Washington football team against the giants, but, especially laying three and a half points, but, especially with a backup quarterback. But, Oh, come on. You were the one say we can't grade this game as Heineke being a backup quarterback. You were the one <laughs> saying Heineke was better right before the season uh, started. And I think he came in and played really well. He gives you that rushing upside. He's an interesting start for fantasy, uh, much like uh, Jalen hurts. The guy's running for his job. Sure. Danny dimes is four and against Washington and four and 19 everywhere else as a starter. But I'll say this. I that's, can't, that's pretty, that's I pretty can't in good conscience. For the people who have their hard earned dollars on the line to pick the New York Giants, are you kidding me? I mean, this Giants defense, which is supposed to be really, really good, they got pushed around by a Pat Shermer led offense and Teddy Bridgewater. They made Teddy Bridgewater look like goddamn Aaron Rodgers week one. And Noah Fant, I mean, again, Noah Fant had himself a game. And I think Logan Thomas is about to have himself a game. He's going to eat. The defensive line, Chase Young, Montez Sweat, Deron Payne, Jonathan Allen against that Giants offensive line. We can count on Danny Dimes for one thing, and that is a key fumble in the game to cost the Giants. I bet it when it was three. So three and a half. Oh, obviously. here we go. Captain, I bet it earlier when it was a better number. No, I'm Wah. just telling you, I bet it at three and a half. I would still oh, or I okay. bet it at three. I would still bet it at three and a half. And I think if you're playing DFS, uh, like single game DFS, put a uh, put a lineup in with a Washington defense in the uh, captain chair. That's my that's my advice to you. Do, do you want me to tell you? I mean, I I I think just in general, it's not smart to to take the the football team again. I mean, that you could have said made the argument twice last year too. I, I and uh, you know, here's the part that you didn't know. I have. Uh, I've gone and done some soul searching <laughs> and I, and I have, I've, I think I found a solution to my man, Danny dimes, uh, fumble turnover issues. There will not be a key turnover. As you say, the defense oh. will, uh, will, will handle Taylor Heineke as they will uh, smother uh, Mr. McLaurin with Bradbury and Logan Thomas. The only guy I'm scared of not, not to mention Sean. <laughs> and if you're watching on YouTube, youtube.com slash sports gambling, we have a totem. I don't know. The kids gave it to me for my birthday. <laughs> I thought I would use it for the show. The Giants started so horribly. We have uh we have, this is Are the you considering burning the totem. This is the Danny dimes turnover totem. <laughs> All right. All right. I like it. Now, every time a turnover, we gotta happens, put it on a necklace and you have to wear it as a totem of shame. If he throws a pick, <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> I let's see, we can put it right here again, youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast. You're missing out. If you're not looking our at our beautiful faces in, in HD, but yeah, come on. I'm taking three, three and a half. This is poorly handicapped. All right, let's move to Sunday, uh, which by the way, that, that game will be on the main TV Thursday night. No FCS football for Colby to complain about. 
nine uh, on September nineteenth, uh, ten a.m. Pacific on the West Coast. As you mentioned, Sean, nine games on the early slate. They couldn't do go eight five. They didn't know about. I, wa- I want to speak to the league. I did send. We the, got eight goddamn TVs. I sent the specifications of God's eye over to the NFL offices. They clearly uh, didn't. Uh, they ignored our request. The Saints head to Carolina. The long turf there in Carolina. Maybe not anymore since they swapped it out. Yo, they are three and a half a good point nugget. home. Dogs plus one fifty five on the money line. Saints Dog. minus one eighty five. Forty five is the total. Uh, this one was one that I circled early. Wow, you know what this reminds me of? Uh, anytime a team comes out super duper hot, week one. Look at the stats. All sorts of regression indicators. He only completed fourteen passes. Winston. He had five touchdowns. He only threw for one hundred and forty eight. Uh, the Packers just didn't show up. Uh, Nicholas Cage was out there, not Aaron <laughs> Rodgers. It was a it was a double. We have confirmation of that. And, and Sean, frankly, this is one of the games that's just it's it's a lopsided bet game early yeah. in the week, and it's lopsided in the way we like it. Right, almost seventy percent of the tickets on the Saints, but seventy percent of the money on the Panthers. So we know the sharp side of this one. Uh, I believe you will also be on the Panthers as you are a Matt Rule. Fanboy, love love Matt Rule, love Carolina, and and they probably left some points on the board, even though even though the Jets defense had a had a pretty good run there. And I'm look, this is essentially a back to back road spot for the Saints. I like fading teams in back to back road spots that really outperformed uh, Week One, and now they're they yeah. have another road game to get up for. I mean, this has got to be a tough stretch for this Saints team and. I know I mentioned it last week when I said uh, Saints were two and fourteen against the spread weeks one and two, but I still like them at you know at that Florida stadium because of Jameis because of the heat. Now they moved to three and fourteen against the spread after week one and week two. So I think this is where the trend comes to play. I, I think McCaffrey he should have a very big game as well. And to me, it was less about New Orleans and New Orleans took advantage of opportunities, but that just felt like a Green Bay team. Much oh, like the Colts man. went down to went down to Florida, was completely <laughs> unprepared, totally. Uh, what does that tell you about this coaching staff, though? Which one, Matt Lafleur, Packers? Well, I I think couple co- a couple teams showed up not ready to play football week one. Yeah, and I you know it's easy to overreact, but boy, uh, yeah. So I'm on I'm I'm definitely with you. I'm on Carolina, and there's some key injuries as well. Marshawn Lattimore is out. You remember when we broke down the handicap of the game yeah. uh, last week? I said Lattimore is one of their only healthy cornerbacks. He's good, but they're pretty thin outside of him. So now they lose Lattimore. I think there's a ton of holes in this uh, New Orleans secondary. And we, I know we just moved Antonio Brown in, Robbie Anderson out in our ETH lineup, Ryan. But I know Robbie Anderson could have he, himself a game. And you throw on the fact that I, New Orleans is th- two of their defensive linemen. I, I Look to not not be there. Davenport and Oni Mata. They have the longest injury report in the league right now, and there's there's clear clusters in the defensive side of the ball. Uh, if you look at the injury report, Sean, uh, if you include guys who got a limited practice, it's three linebackers, it's three defensive backs, and it's two defensive linemen. I, th- it's just not what you want to see. So, uh, you know, sometimes it's easy enough to look. You know, not everyone does this, but if you just pay attention to the in- injury reports. Teams that are banged up don't play as well in the NFL. It's a simple <laughs> way to handicap it, but if nothing else, it should get you off this. If you like the Saints, this should be the reason maybe you back off the Saints. So yeah, it sounds like we agree. This this no, sa- and and I'm just not gonna. And we like the Jameis story. We're Team Jameis yeah. here, but I don't know if he's three and a half point road favorite division game back to back road game. You know what I want to fade quarterback. A Jameis five touchdown <laughs> clean um, dr- interception Here, was here's dropped. Here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, interception was dropped. We will see interceptions. I'm going to bet on the Panthers, and I'm going to hedge on any stock <laughs> com- or stock company involved in LASIK eye surgery. Got because it. if he comes in yeah. and has another five touchdown game, every quarterback in the league is going to be getting LASIK. Is this game on t- on the TV? Absolutely. Yeah, hundred percent. Jameis is always on. TV. This next one possibly Houston not on TV. Uh, heads to Cleveland, where the Browns, uh, twelve and a half point favorites, minus six fifty on the money line. Texans plus four seventy. Forty eight is the total. This line, the look ahead was 13. It only moved a half point on that beautiful, beautiful ass kicking the Texans laid on the Jacksonville Jaguars. That was hilarious. Remember when 
people were telling you Jacksonville was a good bet to win the division. Not us. Locked Not us. up under six uh, and a half. That's looking great if you can't beat the Texans. Oh my goodness. Uh couple couple notes of this game. Uh Tyrod revenge spot. Mm. People probably aren't oh, bringing yeah. that up in the handicap. He really got he got screwed by uh Cleveland. Yeah. Uh, and, and just again, we're, we're looking at a situation. Uh, unfortunately, this is a rookie head coach, but what did we learn? Right? We like the rookie head coaches when they're getting big points on the road yeah. because people are going to come in thinking, oh, okay, I should take the other side. And I think the last thing I'll throw out there, Tyrod Taylor just covers like Teddy yes. Bridgewater covers Tyrod covers five and O oh against the spread since leaving the bills. And uh, I mean Bridgewater too. I, I forget what he is on the road, but it's something insane. Like twenty-two 20, and three. Twenty-two and three against <laughs> the spread on the road. And Tyrod Taylor, you mentioned, is against the spread record, but the guy wins games twenty-five, twenty-one, and one. Now, do I expect him to go in in Cleveland and, and get a win? No, but they could be. Cleveland could be a little flat after that KC loss. That's got to be de- defeating for a team that has this high expectations. Yeah, I wish they had better, a tougher opponent on deck. They do have the bears. It's not that. Yeah, this is, and, and it's tough to find a matchup where you really like Houston <laughs> over Cleveland, but Cleveland, they should be able to pound the rock. Uh, I mean, they're running game with hunt and you know, Chubb against Houston's front seven. That's a huge mismatch uh, for Houston. And I, I I think they could have trouble moving the ball, but again, Tyrod plays a clean game. He keeps you in games. If anyone's going to backdoor cover a spread this week, it's going to be Tyrod Taylor. So Houston plus 12 and a half. We can't, we can't be excited about this team putting up those points. They scored two touched. They were the high. They almost were the highest scoring team of the week. Yeah. And the same way I said, you know, the Eagles, they won by 26 on the road. Yeah. I mean, Houston, that was a, that was a nice win. Granted and it was at home, but still a nice win for them. Here's what I'll say. I, I understand Trevor Lawrence looked bad. The, the urban Meyer experience, not off to a good start and Cleveland looks like they might have a good offense, but what if this Houston defense isn't horrible? Cause it's a bunch of journeymen just trying to bust their ass for another contract yeah. kind of situation. I mean, they have nothing. They have no picks 27, no I mean, reason to tank. I'm, I'm, I mean, not not to use DVOA uh, incorrectly here, only one game, but they, Nerd! they at least were competent. Uh, and, and you guess what? Don't act like you were on Houston last week. I was on Houston last week, but don't act like you were. So I, I, I think this is, you know, my instincts say lay the points because Texans are going to get absolutely shellacked here, but I, I just can't do it. It feels like this is going to be a team we're talking about as one of the best ATS teams in the league this year, because they're going to be so disrespected every week. Cincinnati heads to Chicago where the bears are laying two and a half. Sean, the look ahead here is four and a half big mover minus minus one thirty-five on the money line across the key number Bengals plus plus one fifteen forty-five 45 is the total, you know, as I, I would say the results of these, these two teams uh, games last week, really tee this up to be an obvious spot where we're going to lay the points with the bears. This is we would be sinning against the taking the two and a half, laying the three and a half here. But, but it started out at three and a half. It's moved down to two and a half. And I, I love taking a team coming off a big win, you know, big win for the Bengals at home. They played five quarters. Yeah. And now you have to go on love the road. A non conference road spot for this young Bengals team. Now now, if you're back in the Bears, you're certainly worried about their offensive line. They had issues. Um, but I, I think Cincinnati's back end, in particular Eli Apple, he got picked on a bunch. So I think some of the Bears receivers had themselves a game. I, I still think Montgomery is going to be able to get his. Yeah. Uh, you know, Cincinnati should be able to throw on them a little bit. Uh, certainly, Joe Burrow looked healthier than I expected uh, coming in to start the season. He seemed to be able to trust that knee. But I, would, I mean, the bite we could we have to kind of reset and think. Maybe, a, Cincinnati's a public dog. Well, we're in week two, and they're already making the Bengals a public dog. And the Vikings' defense could be horrible, so yeah. we maybe not the biggest. And, and guess who Cincy has on deck? Sean, the Steelers. Oh, look um, ahead. It's early. Sandwich. It's hard to. It's hard get to get the mustard out. It's hard to say sandwich spot. It's so early <laughs> in the season. Hard to say look ahead, but that is a big look ahead for this Bengals team. Like that's probably the game they had circled before the year. And 
just love fading the results of last week. I think the Bears will obviously do better against the defensive line that doesn't feature Aaron Donald. I mean, we saw the Bengals last week. I don't think the Vikings have a great O line. So there is opportunity here. I think it's lower than three. You have to lay the points. Maybe we'll see a little bit more Justin Fields. I mean, what is Nagy doing? Bringing him in as a, a, a like running the wild. Cat. And even in those plays, he looks good. So dumb. Got in the end zone. It's it's so ridiculous. I'm making sure I didn't have any other sweet nuggets I wanted to bring. Oh, here this is my favorite one. Since he only one win straight up on the road over their last sixteen. Mm, they, they probably have to win the game to cover this one. So not so fast. All right, let's move on. Coming off the Monday night win, the fighting John Gruden's of Las Vegas. Get shit going mentally. Take, Man, they tried to give that game away. Take their ship up the river to Pittsburgh. Well, they'll take on the Steelers lay who are laying five and a half minus two fifty on the money line Vegas plus two ten forty seven is the total. I mentioned they're coming off the Monday night game. So that's that's already a check against them. And well, uh, a Monday night game that was maximum emotion, right? You play essentially five quarters of football. It's very win. draining. You thought Big you win. won the game. Then you had to, then you almost fucked it up. Then you had to win yeah. the game again. I mean, they left it all on the field and kudos to them. It was a great win for the Raiders team, but man, this is, this is just a choice spot for yeah. the Steelers. Yeah. Mac, I mean, if I'm a Steelers backer, they, which I am at minus five and a half, you know, they also law uh, you know, one of the weaknesses of the Steelers offensive line, not the best. You're worried about them handling Crosby who had a hell of a game, ton of pressure. He looks pretty good. Really had an impact. I, I think if they can slow him down a little bit with some chips, that should help. And the fact that Yannick and one of the other Raiders uh, pass rushers, he's going to be out. It, it looks like there's also injury news at the running back spot. Josh Jacobs Wednesday sidelined and it just said with everything. <laughs> it did not specify the injury. Yeah, probably a rest day, but I mean again, I I, I lied earlier when I said the the Saints had the longest injury report. It's the Raiders. Yeah. Um I'm sure some of that is rest coming off the the Monday night game, but I I just don't know who's who's if you've been gambling on football like we have for all these years, documented picks against the spread for the last 10 I don't know how you take the Raiders in this spot. I don't know how you take John Gruden on an early kick. Something we've talked about yeah. before, Sean, I have a hilarious stat. <clears throat> well, it's funny because the West coast teams playing on the East coast early game, it actually, they actually do well with the note ex exception yeah, of I, Gruden. I have the numbers yeah. West coast teams playing early on the East coast are 23 and five against the spread. If you exclude John Gruden, <laughs> John Gruden in this situation, three and eight against the spread. We got to get our shit. Going Don't know. I mean, it could, maybe it's a, it's a, bo a body clock science thing. John Gruden's more of a football guy. I just don't know how you uh, TJ Watts going to have himself a game. And we didn't talk about it. I, I, I had Steelers defense in, uh, in the DraftKings uh, yeah. lineup, Melvin Ingram was a really sneaky uh, pickup for the Steelers. And as yeah, long as he just, stays healthy, that guy is a goddamn beast. And you're playing opposite TJ Watt. That makes sure you're playing the shittier tackle uh, for the most part. And he, he looked like he, unblockable at times. I think the only way this, this craters is if the pass rush for the Raiders is real enough to get if, home if here. Crosby creates some turnovers with big Ben who, again, you know, he, he's hanging in there. But I, I I really like their pass catchers against the uh, you know the Steelers receivers against the Raiders receivers and yeah oh well last note Kramer reliable sources say that uh -oh. in Las Vegas on Friday night Kenyon Drake was spotted at a uh, adult club that well, that's, perhaps a strip club you have to know when to come you're sourcing the origin of the hamstring <laughs> injury well you get a little dehydrated I mean again we were out in Vegas is that. We were having a couple of cocktails, completely unrelated to the Canyon Drake story, and you feel dried out. You feel dehydrated. Can I ask a question? Sure. Do we need to track now that uh, you know things are pretty open out in Vegas? Yeah. Do we need to track teams after they play in Vegas? I think so, because now that things are more open up, um, so we need to we need to monitor the Ravens and the Vegas Raiders results as they head to moister climate. Maybe not adjusting to the yes. the climate, you know <laughs> that dry. I mean, we're still. I, I honestly being there for six days, which the football teams aren't there that long. 
I'm still recovering on Wednesday, September 15th. Yeah. Maybe we're just old. No, I think that, yeah, again, we're, uh, we've agreed on everything. We're, we're fading the old guys, <laughs> except, uh, except Roethlisberger. Oh, speaking of getting older, Ryan, one of the <laughs> shittier parts, losing your hair. Uh, I know I'm, I'm hanging on to what I got here and uh, thankfully keeps makes that a little bit easier. Unlike uh, Carson Wentz, I'm not going to fumble away my follicles. I improvise that. You're welcome, Keeps. Low cost treatment start at just ten dollars per month, and uh, Keeps even has gen- uh, generic versions. You can do the doctor's visit virtually; makes it easy. They have more five res- star reviews than any of its competitors, so in good company there with the Sports Gambling Podcast. Again, if you start losing it, prevention is key. Get to it early. You're ready to take hair loss or take action and prevent hair loss. Go to keeps.com slash SGP to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's keeps.com slash SGP to get your first month free. Keeps.com slash SGP. Oh man, beat in the sports book all weekend in Las Vegas. Glad I had a couple extra bucks. A little walking around money. Need some more cash in your pocket. Got to check out Mint Mobile Wireless for only fifteen dollars a month. Why? To get rid of the retail operation. Don't need it. A guy sending a spinning a sign outside of a uh, big cellular store. You don't need that. All you need is premium wireless for just fifteen bucks a month. Unlimited talk and text. High speed data. They got the five G network. Best part is you can keep your same phone number, your phone, and if you're not one hundred percent satisfied, seven day money back guaranteed. Again, 15 bucks a month, mintmobile.com slash sports SGP, mintmobile.com slash sports SGP. Nice job, Sean. Thank you. Coming after the break, we got Buffalo, Miami, 10 a.m. down in the heat, Sean. The humidity. I didn't actually check the weather. Do you know how hot it's going to be? Miami is plus three and a half, plus 155 on the money line. Bills minus 185. 47 and a half is the total. Well, it makes me think a trip from Vegas to Miami could be tricky. We'll have to monitor the, that kind of travel activity too. Boy, I, you know, I think there's the, the, cr- the crowd that thinks Josh Allen just had a tough matchup week mm. one. And you know, maybe this is the bounce back spot, another tough defense, another, another road. Uh, this is a road spot this time. And if the, again, we, what did we see when watching the tape? It, it was the deep ball that wasn't connecting the offense. just didn't look like it was there. I think Miami could get home here as well. And I, I think this this is another matchup where we might see Josh Allen make some mistakes, and we might he start hearing the regression army and the echoes louder and louder, <laughs> uh, because this Bills team seemed like one of the more consensus picks to win a division. Yeah, uh, and I again, the Steelers could be really good, but the offense is going to need to take a step forward, and this is not the best spot for me. We don't like these teams coming down south early in the season. No, and, it's and Bills are going to be wearing spot. the uh, dark blue jerseys. It, this and it's a division game, man. But but the Dolphins look so bad. I mean, I know they won, and I know I've been a You're shit biased, talker dude. on the Dolphins. Two is four and zero oh against the spread as he a tri- dog. He tried to throw the game away with that interception, but you know what? I'll do it. I'll, I'm going to take Miami. Here's why it's a division game. Yeah. Them as a home dog plus three and a half. This is a tough spot to uh, go down and win early in the season. This and, and our tenants are take Florida home dogs. And I, and as much as it pains me to pick the dolphins here, I'm going to have to do it. it. It's, it certainly could be a get right game for Buffalo. I, I don't think this makes it into our uh, circa millions card, Ryan. Cause I, I don't have great <sighs> confidence. The bills are a public team too this week. Really? People well, want Miami, to bet the bounce. Back. Miami lost uh Raekwon Davis. So they could, the thing is they don't really have a, a good running uh, attack and, and Miami's defensive uh, backfield is solid enough. I, you know, I, I like this bills team. I, I didn't want to be in a position where I was on the dolphins this week, but the only angle I could talk myself into is that they, they did just beat the Patriots on the road. That probably was a big win, but the bills were the bigger threat this year anyway. So like any, like of all the, the only game where they're not let down after that big Pats win is having Josh Allen come to their house. Yeah. And you know, I, I we got to love what Flores is doing at this point. So yeah, let's let's hop on the Dolphins. I I uh, it's gross. 
Dolphins have covered five of their last six against the division too. So uh, I, I don't, I don't, I, I think I like being on the unpopular side here. Next up, the Rams head to Indy to take on Mr. Carson Wentz as a four point favorite, minus 195 on the money line, plus 165 for the home Colts. 47 and a half is the total. As a as a as a guy who likes to talk shit on Daniel Jones and Carson Wentz, it was both. It was great to see <laughs> week one. Fuck they off. both come in with clutch fumbles, as predicted. Wentz holds on to the ball too long. He turns it over. Their left tackle looks shaky, as yeah. we said going into that matchup. Seahawks and now, didn't have a great pass rush. Either. No, not at all. <laughs> and now you're bringing Aaron Donald in there, and with Xavier Rhodes out, I, I haven't seen. You know, I think he was maybe limited in practice. We'll see if he plays. Either way, I can't imagine he's a hundred percent. And Seattle got the deep ball on 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 Indianapolis's defense. And I mean, I, you know, we saw what Van Jefferson did. Maybe it's not him. Maybe Deshaun Jackson has maybe Tutu Atwell gets his. You know, I got Deshaun Jackson in the DFS lineup. Sure. He he is a fun guy to play. I'm sure he's like stone minimum, but it's just tough for me to find a bunch of matchups. I mean, the, the Colts are still without T Y Hilton. I do think Jonathan Taylor probably gets his, I think they're going to do a similar game plan that they had against Chicago. We'll sit back. We'll let you beat. Oh, you want to do a little running. That's fine. Yeah. Beat us with the pass. And I don't think the Indianapolis Colts can do that. And no. I, I don't like taking them as a four point road favorite here, but you could argue it. It hasn't moved enough. We'll be chalky. Yeah. And I think it's, you know, at this point you can say, wow, Ryan, you nailed it. Uh, the Rams offense is going to be the sports car this year. No, I mean, I, I was skeptical uh, that Stafford could come in and it would just be flipping on a light switch. It was certainly early. <laughs> I do like this matchup again for them. We'll see what happens to Stafford when he has to go outdoors in the cold in uh, November and December, but right. this is a dome environment in September. We do have uh, some notable look aheads to mention. Yeah. Indy has Tennessee on deck. Obviously, big divisional matchup for them. The Rams have Tampa, or the Rams have Tampa on deck at their home. Again, it's probably too early in the season to to think about that, but we have to mention it in a non-conference road spot, especially Sean. Uh, certainly, a number of reasons to maybe red flag this for the Rams, but I just think the adjustment hasn't moved enough. I don't think we've, you know, even though this is this number, the look ahead was two and a half and it moved to four. We normally don't want to be on the wrong side of that kind of move. Would have loved to get down last week, but I don't know how you play this Colts team against that Rams defense and the four points. It'll maybe it comes down to a field goal game, but I I don't see how you, I'm I'm going to be, this is a game. We're going to jump on the public side and just take the Rams and not think about it. Is the the market we're we're, we're going to be ahead of it's market. a non conference road favorite. Usually I stay away, but you have to make exceptions for your auto fades. And right now, Carson Wentz is a auto. I'm, I'm starting to think we're going to have the Rams and the Seahawks winning like 12, 13 games this year. Well, I I if you listen to the show. I was all over uh, them in the NFC. I had you know I what? had I had them winning the uh, NFC West. That's wow. going to be a good. What a game. great job we did. Uh, San Francisco heads to Philly, where the <laughs> Eagles <laughs> uh, opened as a four and a half. Point dog or on the I mean, look ahead. Now it's three and a half plus one sixty on the money line. Niners minus one ninety fifty is the total. Uh, I'll throw it out there before you start talking. But uh, Niners have Green Bay on deck. Philly has Dallas. Yeah, it's Kyle Shanahan, right? Dude can't cover a fucking spread as a big favorite. Oh, do you mean the greatest coach of all time, Kyle Shanahan, the guy who hasn't figured out how to win more than six games in three out of the four years? I, I mean, the 49ers, they're on a back to back road trip. They did the smart thing and stayed out in West Virginia. I'll give them that. But again, a 26 point road win is, is not nothing, right? And, and not nothing. And I agree that Atlanta isn't that good. I didn't think they were going to be great going into this season. That's why I bet the Eagles' money line uh, as a massive dog over at the win when we were in Las Vegas. And the 49ers already getting bit with that injury bug once again. Um, they got Jason Verrett. He's out for the season. Emmanuel Mosley, their yep. other cornerback, he's banged up. That might matter. Mostert is is out of the game, and we'll, you know, I mean, if anyone can plug in different running backs, it probably is the 49ers. Mm-hmm. But they're really banged up, and I think the Eagles are going to be able to throw on that banged up 
49ers secondary. I, I like the offensive line to be able to slow down the the 49ers pass rush. And you watch that Lions game, the Lions were able to move the ball. The Lions were able to check down to some of the Jamal Williams, DeAndre Swift. Yeah, some of their numbers got padded in garbage time, but they were able to move the ball throwing to the running backs. I I think San Francisco is going to have trouble slowing down this uh, Eagles offense. And again, I'm just not going to take Jimmy G as a road favorite. I mean, Kittle, maybe he gets his, I was but other than that, you. I think we'll be able to match up well against are, him. Are you worried about Kittle? Yeah, but our linebacker play is much better than it was last year. Last year he did go off on us, but um, this year our linebacker play is better. And we won that game even when Kittle uh, went off. I mean, look, I don't have a lot to to add to what to you what you said, other than like if I came to you and said, "Hey, I have a seventeen and seven system for you. Do okay, you want, do you want to buy the next pick? It's happening this weekend. It's mm, betting against. I would never buy a pick. <laughs> it's it's uh it's betting against Kyle Shanahan as a favorite. Yeah, that, that's what that is. Uh, what if I came to you and said, "Hey, I got I got a uh, I got a system ten and six last sixteen. Dog. Oh, I, I might like that? this system. Are we are we betting against Jimmy Garoppolo as a favorite since he's been on the Niners? To me, that's the all this is about. Uh, as, as, and you know, and the Eagles are getting the fan back, the fans back at Lincoln that Financial. Some like that place is gonna be fucking lit. Uh, I I don't think I don't think San Francisco understands the type of energy. And that was kind of a that was a that might have been a draining game for the 49ers. They were out there for a, a bunch of plays. Uh, a bunch of guys got banged up. And now you got to go live in West Virginia for a week and then go to Philly. Yeah, I mean, it's not it, it's not an easy spot for them. With the secondary mission of maybe mushing the uh, mushing the Eagles with the uh, Danny Dimes turnover totem over here, we're gonna take uh, Philly to cover their sixth straight home games as an underdog. Yeah, I mean the Eagles as a home dog. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Fucking go, Let's baby. Fucking go. This one's on the main TV, right? Yeah, at least for the first half until it's a blowout. I mean, if the Eagles blow them out, we'll we got to watch. I, all we the... we still have to watch it. Denver heads to Jacksonville, where the Broncos are laying six minus two sixty on the money line. Jacksonville plus two hundred five. Forty five is the total. I heard Sean stacking the money green earlier in this show say yep. that he has to stick to his fading teams in Florida early in the season hmm. mantra. Well, again, how is he going to get I, out of this? There are some asterisks, and this Jags <laughs> team is currently an asterisk. Danger. If, if the team is stuck in auto fit, and Jacksonville is stuck in auto fit, I mean, they gave Carlos Hyde. He led the team in nine carries. What the hell is going on down there? Oh, Lawrence threw three picks. He could have thrown more. And this Denver team is buying into Bridgewater, <laughs> which which sounds kind of crazy. The Butler, baby. But they're buying into Bridgewater. Von Thirty-five and thirteen ATS as a starter overall in the NFL. And what about on the road? What did you we say it was twenty-two and three? Twenty-two and three ATS. Yeah, I mean, not <laughs> many times as a favorite, but he just Four went and in one as a road favorite. He went into New York and took down the vaunted New York Giants defense, covering that number pretty easily. Now you got Von Miller on the other side. Von Miller, I haven't felt this way since when eighteen was here. I mean, there's something happening in Denver. <laughs> Now maybe maybe Jacksonville wakes up and they they ball out, but man, I I just don't like any of their matchups. The uh, the situationally though, all the things are kind of pointing against Denver, but I cannot I cannot take Jacksonville here. Yeah, I mean to me the angle is we thought there might be a version of this where Urban Meyer just wasn't ready for the NFL. Yeah. We did we. And we Licking thought his chops. we also pointed out that once we started seeing uh, the training camp voyeur cams, that Trevor Lawrence didn't look no. the part of an NFL quarterback. Now we've seen all the quarterbacks play an actual Week One regular season game, uh, with the exception of uh, Trey Lance and Justin Fields, who just got in for uh, running back duty. And it's pretty clear to me: Mac Jones looks like he belongs. Yep, McCorkle. Zach Wilson looks like he belongs. Trevor Lawrence, he could have had seven interceptions. I, I don't think you can go low enough on this team. I would never tell you to fade a team coming down to Florida, back to back road game, all of the things you can list yeah. out, the humidity down there in Jacksonville. But I'm going to tell you what's going to happen in this game. Denver is going, and you have to have at least a couple lineups with Denver defense. Yeah. And maybe that's the, uh, the head to head lineup. 
that you play because this defense is scoring a touchdown. You bet the prop on the Broncos to score a defensive touchdown. Vic Fangio has a fucking PhD compared to Urban Meyer, and guess what? He's distracted because he's answering questions he's about Googling, the USC. He he's had, Googling the Trojans roster. No, he got, he's already been asked and he had yeah. to talk about it, which yeah. means he, we joke, right? Oh, you guys are being silly. Urban Meyer is going to be the coach of USC on January one of 2022. And we'll see if it lasts that long, but uh, yeah. He's gonna, mean, he's gonna leave. You, you have to identify a dumpster fire and Jacksonville could be that dumpster fire. Yeah, you, sometimes you got to. All right, so which game? Which game? We have games? one more 10 a.m. game, right? One more Patriots at Jets. Jets plus six at home, plus 200 on the money line, oh. minus 255 for the Pats. 42 is the total. Sean McCorkle is a rookie. This is his first road game, and he's laying six points. No, thank you. I like, I, I'm going to, I'll bet on Robert Sala blindly to me. Uh, you know what? Everyone's talking about Belichick versus Zach Wilson. This is also a great defensive mind versus another rookie yeah. quarterback. I mean, <laughs> yeah, situationally, Too I got to take the Jets here plus six. It doesn't feel great. I mean, you know, the Jets did lose their uh, safety, Lamarcus Joyner, for the season. That's not good. 90% they of the lost, tickets. Uh, right. Makai Becton, they lost him. That's not good. Six point division dog. I, I think you got to take it in a situation like this, where the, the, this maybe is the Jets Super Bowl. And, and no. what do you think their Super Bowl? Is? I mean, I think they're going to get up for it. I, I think this team has. I, I don't think this is a Super Bowl game. Jets, I, Jets are six and thirty one straight up last thirty seven against New England. So certainly that they have that going against them. But I, I think I've seen enough out of Zach Wilson that he can uh, he can keep them in this game. And you know. Is two of that much better than Zach Wilson? Maybe we'll find out here in this game. Ooh. I think they're able to move the ball, I, but again, the left tackle injury is worrisome. I, I do think interesting, and uh, we didn't talk about it, but I do think kind of interesting. James White uh, for the Patriots might have a decent game because if you watch that Carolina Jets yeah. game, Chris McCaffrey wasn't able to dominate running the ball. I no. mean, he checked down city though. Yeah. Check down city. And I, and I think James white could have like a monster PPR game. So maybe look to throw him in uh, some in. of your DFS lineups. We didn't get to him on the, uh, on the DFS show, but the more I look at him, the more I, I like him to have a, a nice day catching the ball. Not, not really fair to use this nugget, but uh, new England has only covered one out of their last six as a favorite. Uh, that's Tom Brady leaving your team. Yeah, that's playing defensive that's, ball, that's, and I people mean, so, still thinking you're the Patriots. Some of that's Cam Newton, but yeah, laying six points on the road here with McCorkle feels horribly mispriced. Yeah, and uh, I like McCorkle, but six points is way too much. Yeah. All right, and so we're, so we're watching this game. Yes, this game's on the list. Denver Jacksonville is that one that yes. maybe we take off, or we're watching that. Um. I think I may have already bet it, so we probably okay. have to watch Rams, it. Colts, we're watching that. Buffalo yeah. Dolph Bills Dolphins. Kind of feels like a honorary take it off, but we gotta watch that. I'm fine with just losing Houston Cleveland. I, I can I can check that on game So test. no red zone, just well, drop one. But I game. do like red zone, but then we would have to drop another game. Cincy Chicago. Uh, that's kind of an interesting game. And I do like to watch the Colts uh get fucked up. Hmm. So maybe we just get a maybe we just put a temporary. We add we <laughs> add an extra lash to God's eye and and just go nine screens. <laughs> we do hard. have that uh, sixty five inch TV sitting on the office floor that we, we tried to bring into the to the tailgate. Man, this is a tough this is tougher than the locks. Yeah, I mean, I would I would agree with you. I'll we can uh, we can monitor Houston Cleveland. Yeah, just go eight games. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. What do we got? Oh oh, pickswise.com, baby. You kidding me? Love me some Pixwise. You know why? Cause I love free sports bet and picks. Pixwise got a ton of them, helmed by a team of trend watching, data devouring sports fanatics, giving you the who, how, and why behind every prediction for every game, every day, and every sport. Loaded with the best bets, props, and parlays you can find. In depth analysis on every game, all for free. Found your pick. Search the latest sports book promotions to sign up. An account, compare the odds, and place your bet. Download the Pixwise app now. 
to make your next bet better. Pixelwise backs responsible gambling. Gambling problem? Call one eight hundred Gambler. And also, uh, we're brought brought to you by Odds Crowd. That's right. They got a weekly contest. They got a three hundred fifty dollar NFL weekly, two hundred fifty dollar weekly for all sports, and of course, our weekly SGPN contest. Which is a hundred dollars, and you can only enter if you are a SGPN app user. <clears throat> Get all that over at oddscrowd.com. Kramer, let's uh, take a look at the leaderboard. All right, well, let's let's first see who won week one. Uh, wow! All right, nice uh, sixteen point nine three units of profit. Daniel eighty eight taking it down. A nice four unit win, Sean. Kramer, you got to uh, switch the camera. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and for the season long, which by the way, what place are you in? Have you looked? Probably not amazing. Oh. I'm in fifth place in the college one. Okay, that's better. Is also Daniel 88 with his uh, 16. So, oh wait, that's the week one. Here we go. Arthur Fleck. Yeah. Danny Locks in second place. Nice representation on the board there, and Bradley. St- I don't know. Dot 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 cuts it off. So uh, I am uh, I'm I'm not doing so well. Sitting in a hundred and hundred and forty fourth place. I'm beating you. That's all that matters. But as I like to say, Sean, uh, it's all about the windshield and not the rearview mirror. So well, don't go through it, Ryan. Let's, Come on. Let's look forward and uh, let's pick some afternoon games. The Minnesota Vikings. They head to Arizona. Speaking of the desert. Arizona laying three and a half. Sean, the look ahead was one and a half. Big mover mm. here. Minus two hundred. Key number. Minus two hundred for the Cardinals. Vikings plus one seventy. Fifty one is the total. Kirk Cousins. Maybe he'll feel a little bit more at home in Arizona. Uh, no, you like that. no, no, you like that. no construction <laughs> projects to worry about since he's on the road. Uh, or maybe he'll be looking to build, pop up some temporary, uh, yeah. some temporary housing. God damn, this is the th- this is the toughest one because uh, everything signals you to take the Vikings here. But the the Cardinals could be one of the teams that maybe we just say oh we were wrong about, but I can't think that because Kingsbury has shown us just this proven track record of Cliff being Kitchens a, is kind of a disaster. Buffoon. Ah. But what really sold me was how good that Arizona defense played. We knew they'd be yeah. able to move the ball. Kyler Murray looks a lot better healthy. Chandler Jones had 5 sacks. Now this I know. this Vikings team w- w- went on the road to Cincinnati, got their ass kicked. Now they got to go back home and then go back to Arizona. I think that's a tough uh, road trip for them. I do think Justin Jefferson will be able to get his a little bit because I do think the Arizona secondary eventually is going to be exposed a little bit. But that that Arizona defensive line and that front seven, I mean, we kind of make fun of Arizona for keep drafting linebackers, but they did a great job slowing down Derrick Henry, and if they can do that. To Dalvin Cook, even a little bit, that messes up the play but, action. And really, this Minnesota defense, I, I'm just, I'm out on. But isn't this the kind of spot that, like, Cousins like randomly throws for a bunch of yards in? M- Murray only two and five against the spread as a favorite in his career. I know this yeah, is a new th- season. Th- this Arizona team, if you're saying a, they've turned the corner, as a gut handicapper, they had too much juice, too much heat in that Tennessee game for me to ignore it. That did not feel like an outlier game, but Ryan, you're on the Vikings. It's, you know, you're sharp. I, I don't, I don't like being in this spot. I, we like Zimmer as a coach. I keep, I keep feeling I like, like him he's against the spread. Correct. Yeah. Something the extra half point here, I guess has me thinking because I, I do think when we, after week one, this was the team that I was obviously going to fade the next week. They had a, they had a great game. They put up a lot of points. It was a blowout. They had tons of sacks. Everyone's going to be talking about the Cardinals. This, the Cardinals, that. Yeah, I'm going to take the Vikings. I, I think this is just one I need to be contrarian on. The public very heavily uh, on the Cardinals in this spot. Uh, almost seventy percent of the tickets. So, uh, Kirk Cousins. It's is you this like prime, that, Ryan. It's not prime time. It's a it's, it's a, a late a, afternoon. No, it's the West Coast, so it's one o'clock kick. <laughs> Don't you know? You got to know your time zone, Sean. All right. 125 on the West Coast, Atlanta, who, by the way, Sean, is a close your eyes special. Ooh. Coming off the thumping from the Eagles. They take oh, on like that. the Bucks on long rest. Look ahead here went from eight to twelve and a half. I don't know how accurate that data is, but Jesus, 
minus six ninety on the money line for the Bucks and Gronk. Falcons plus four ninety. Fifty two is the total. I mean, as we were watching the Bucks game, and people who were on the Cowboys were reminding you how this team wasn't all that great during the season, and they kind of just went on a run. And it, you know they made a lot of mistakes in this game. Something we didn't think they were going to do. I think we were on Brady's season under interception prop. Not yeah. a great start for that one. Um, this is one of those rookie uh, head coaches on the road catching a lot of points. Uh, system plays uh, with Arthur Smith and the Falcons. I just think this number is ridiculous. Yeah, I mean this is a division game with a. You know, I mean, whatever you think about Matt Ryan personally, I'm at twelve and a half. This is you're insulting his manhood at this point. And the soft Tampa Bay, they 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 lost some guys in that secondary, and the Cowboys were able to throw the ball on them. I I think the Atlanta passing game bounces back. I I think Ridley has a good game. I I think Pitts is able to get some a little bit. I I think they're going to completely shut down the run, but I think Atlanta should be able to throw the ball on this Tampa Bay defense. Tampa Bay is great at stuffing the run, but we saw throughout the season and week one they they have weaknesses in the secondary, um, and and again it's just after you get your ass kicked by that much and you're catching this many points, Falcons are 31 and 19 against the spread following a loss of six plus points in the previous 50 instances. Like this is just a big yeah. picture play. Falcons are eight and three against the spread as dogs of seven and a half since 2009. I, I mean. I don't think that, you know, watching that Eagles game and seeing the Falcons up close, I think what's worrisome is the Arthur Smith play calling, like how often he ran the ball. Yeah, Jesus so Christ. hopefully hopefully as an Atlanta backer, he adjusts yeah. a little bit. But I, I didn't and there is the chance that, you know, Matt Ryan is kind of washed. I mean, I'm not super high on them as a team overall, but I'm not gonna I like fade them. them unless the number is smaller. Yeah, I honestly it's interesting because I I do think uh, like Sirianni just came out and out coached him, and perhaps I, I should have paid more attention to the the rookie head coach thing uh, laying those points, but uh, just to give you a number on the trend, twelve and four over the last uh, sixteen rookie head coaches playing their first career road game in week two, um, and then uh, Bruce Arians has never covered a double digit spread. I thought that was interesting. Really. Uh, he's a man. He doesn't need to cover a spread. <laughs> he's a gentleman. No, and you know? and they have a lot of veteran guys. I could see them. Just the, this division. They don't need to keep the foot on the gas. And it's a division game. I mean, twelve and a half points now, in a division game is insane. I do. You know, we should bring the money's still coming in on Tampa. Yeah, but it's not a complete wash to mm. Tampa. So people are betting Atlanta. So yeah, I mean, I guess there is uh, there is concern that if Atlanta becomes a public dog, then then maybe we're in trouble. But I wouldn't be surprised if this closes closer to ten. Like I don't yeah. think this is getting to fourteen. All right, next up, one twenty five on the West Coast. The Seahawks they host the Titans, who are another close your eyes special. Boy, oh, this is a tough one. Titans are plus five and a half, plus two hundred on the road. Seattle minus two fifty five. Fifty four is the total. The twelfth man is back after uh, a year off, or kind of. Um, all right, so the close your eyes special angle makes sense if we don't immediately need to adjust this Titans team <laughs> and there, and, and just like Arthur Smith was this mad genius who didn't look like a mad genius on his new team, yeah. but he was on his old team. How, how did That's both confusing. teams that he was involved in look, look like, like complete shit. dog shit? Uh, maybe it's a curse. Uh, who knows what he did? Here's, I just want to take you through this math and maybe someone in the, in the chat can tell me I'm wrong. Seattle was a three point favorite last week at Indy, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. And this week, Tennessee is catching five and a half in Seattle, right? So if you adjust the line for neutral using the transitive property, which is how most people do their power rankings, you're telling me Tennessee is three and a half points better than this Colts team? No, right? Yeah. That, I, I don't see that number making sense to me. And while we love the close your eyes special. If you're new to the program, close your eyes special. You underperform the spread by 21 points, and you're getting points the next week. Uh, obviously, it's it's clear to to see why that works as a trend. You're fading recency. 
That's that's the gist of it. But in this case, dare I go against it? Dare I just say fuck it? Russ is cooking. This team's gonna cover Unlimited. numbers. The crowd's gonna be feeling it, even if it, they're not throwing it. It's Chris Carson running it. I like. I think I like Derrick Henry in this spot a little bit, and, and they're an obvious candidate for a bounce back. But I'm gonna go against the trend here, and I'm just gonna say they, they fuck have it. a lot of talent. On, they have a lot of talent on offense, but that I think will bounce back. But I don't think Arizona's good. I, I, I think I, Tennessee's just fucking yeah. something's wrong. Something's I, wrong with this team. Yeah, I, I uh, yeah. I'm uh, I'm I'm t- I'm with you. I'm taking the Seahawks. Uh, it's so public. The Seahawks, they're they're 27 and eight against the spread in September home games. Like I, it's, I, it's more to me. It's less about fading the Titans and more just riding this Seattle team at home. They showed you we were high on the Seahawks coming in. They are who we thought they were. Don't let them off the hook, Ryan. Don't let them I, off the hook by not taking them. I just think Russ is is on another level. And I mean, honestly, non-conference road spot, and they do have Indy on deck, Sean. There, yeah, I, I at least have to note that. And the last thing that kind of tipped the scales for me is I really thought I was going to be coming in here, sitting on a very public side here. Sixty-seven percent of the tickets on the Titans. Oh, so so public I, dog, get out of here. Dog. Give me September Russ. Give me this Seahawks team. I think they're going to be able to do like, there's no reason they can't do the exact same thing to this Titans team that they did just did to the Colts team. Who's probably a, a much better defense, much better defense, even with the injury. So, oh yeah. I mean, I was going to say, we should probably look to leave this off the card, but we might not have to leave well, this off Schmitty, the card. Oh, uh, six, six, nine or zero nine. Almost nice. there. Saying, uh, damn, that would put <laughs> Tennessee and Buffalo at zero and two to start the year. Didn't see that coming. No, neither did I. But I, you know, but there's always a couple surprising zero and two yeah. teams that figure it out Sometimes after the season pivot. goes along. And and Tennessee's defense just too many holes for a well-oiled Seattle machine. And Adrian in the YouTube are pointing out Seattle big win on the road last week and let down the spot for Seattle uh, at home here. But not with this Seattle team. Not with them getting. The twelfth man back for the first time no in over down. a year. They have Minnesota on deck, and, and I don't feel like that was such a uh, like a massive step up for them. I mean, they were two and a half, three point road favorites. Yeah. Like they, they took care of business. I I don't feel like that this veteran team isn't going to be smelling themselves like a like a Cincinnati or some other teams who had some wins, maybe surprise some people. I, look, we're obviously on the sauce. Yeah, I don't think you know love this. The sauce. What's stronger, our love of the Seahawks or our hatred of the Cowboys? <laughs> it's pretty close right now. I well, mean, but I mean, you look at you know, the Seattle is one of those teams we've always taken. But then you look at like Seattle's record over the past decade against the spread. It's it's one of the best in the league. There sometimes, uh, sometimes there's n- there's nothing wrong with just ordering the same thing off the menu. <laughs> Give me some more Russ's cooking. All right, last of the late the afternoon games. Dallas coming off Thursday night football. They head to Los Angeles. I don't know if this is a team I trust coming to SoCal. A little trouble to get into. The Chargers, they are minus three, minus one eighty on the money line. Dallas plus one fifty. Fifty five is the total. Um Cowboys have the Eagles on deck, so you have that same kind of non conference road spot with a divisional foe on deck. Chargers have the Chiefs on deck. Uh, that one is a little bit more significant to me. Uh, that that's one thing that kind of pushes me towards like, do I really want to bet against the Cowboys this week? Uh, the other one being the the Chargers are five fourteen and one against the spread as a home favorite. Uh, a lot of that was Anthony Lynn though, so you maybe chuck that one out. Obviously, we're fading the Cowboys here, mm. but there are a lot of reasons to to like the Cowboys, right, Sean? Um, I mean, the, put you it know, on the tee. You're supposed to smash it. No, absolutely not. There's not a lot of reasons to like the Cowboys and Demarcus Lawrence. He's out. Lael Collins. He's out. I mean, yeah. these are some of the best players on their line. <laughs> and you know, Demarcus Lawrence is huge. Michael Gallup's out. Now that's not a game changer, but that's certainly. I love that he's gonna was, matter. Lawrence was afraid of the ocean. He didn't like turning his back I mean, to the ocean. Yeah, and maybe the ocean <laughs> took him out. Finally, finally, he let down his guard. But Lyle Collins, that's the kind of guy you need when you're trying to block Joey goddamn Bosa. And watching Herbert, I, I didn't catch as much of that Chargers um, WFT game live, but I was watching it uh, on God's Eye, Ryan, doing my research. <laughs> we had eight TVs going, replaying all the games in case we missed some stuff. Uh, 
games on seven of the TVs. Rudy was on one of the TVs. We left that on. <laughs> you gotta you gotta leave a seat out for Rudy. But um chart, <laughs> I mean, Herbert made some big boy throws. You know what I mean? Like on the road, out route, 25 yards down the field, throwing it with anticipation. You know those kind of throws where the guy Keenan Allen hasn't even cut and the ball's already out. Like any sort of idea that he was um that was kind of a rookie or fluke. We didn't see any of that uh week one. Now he did throw a pick and he did get a fortunate bounce with the fumble to put it in. But but I, I think this Chargers team is, is gonna be able to move the ball. I mean, the Lawrence industry in, in, in injury is yeah. huge. Um, I, I mean, as far as the like other stuff, uh, Cowboys have extra rest. They yep. probably have more fans. Chargers are horrible <laughs> against the spread at home, but most of that's pre Herbert and they are opening up the stadium. So maybe they can get some fans to actually come out. I think it will be kind of a bummer for chargers fans when, uh, when the Cowboys have more fans at the stadium. That being said at minus three, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, Ryan? Uh, yeah. I mean, of course you're, you're, t- I, I do think I, I do think the bottom line here is you think that Washington has an elite defense. And if you think that Washington has an elite defense and you saw how Herbert looked last week, what do you think he's going to do to this Cowboys defense? They're horrible. I love this game. This might dare. We lock this well, We can't lock it up. It's too, it's there's, it's too close to the heart Sunday night football, the Kansas city chiefs, they head to Baltimore coming off Monday night football. Where the Chiefs are laying three and a half, Sean. This one, the look ahead was minus one. So another big mover through a key number. Minus 190 on the money line for the Chiefs. Ravens plus 160. 55 is the total. Oh man. Th- this uh feels like a tailor made spot to take the Ravens. Yeah. Until you realize like you saw what I mean, are we worried about the secondary at all? And Carr just kind of Kind of yeah, car lit them up. I mean, I, I, you know, if you're betting this, you would have liked to have gotten a three or obviously the one, uh, you know, look ahead line, and that's why you should, you know, should get ahead of some of these. But again, in the same reason reason why I'm fading the Raiders, I'm also fading the Ravens. Like they, that was a draining ass game, and you saw Lamar Jackson tweeting about fumbled twice. I don't, I could not read you what he. It's like. Fumble that ass, or so, like I don't even know what it read, but clearly he was upset <laughs> yeah. about his fumbles. I'm too old to get the young kid talk, but um, it was a long ass game, tough spot. I mean, they've had so many injuries and and injuries injuries in the secondary. I mean, Derek Carr was moving the ball yeah. in the air at will. Who uh, who had an amazing game, Ryan? Darren Waller. Darren Waller. Who's the who's one tight end that's possibly better than Darren Waller? Travis, Travis Kelsey. Kelsey. Now, I mean, can't it, I, I think the argument against it's pretty clear. Baltimore as a home dog, mm. you know, opening game with fans. So good. Get up spot for them, certainly. And and Harbaugh, but man, I, I just Chiefs just don't cover anymore. Two and ten against the spread in their last twelve. But a lot of that has been a bigger spread. I, I still think Mahomes under six, under seven is just something I got to be on every time. Harbaugh, a good coach, six, one and one against the spread since 2019. No, there's a lot of good angles on it. Nine. And yeah, like you said, since 2018, nine and one against the spread as a home, as an underdog, just it's a scary place to fade. But uh, I mean, the Andy Reid looked good. Uh, The, the, the offense looked good. They, they, they weathered the storm play calling look good. I mean, he, he also looked <laughs> good, uh, but uh, again, they weathered the storm. Like the Ravens could do the same thing, and guess what? They lost by four. So I guess we lay it here. It, it, it again, it felt it felt a little chalky uh, to come in here and say, yeah, let's lay the points on the road, Sunday night football, prime time in Baltimore, a place historically pretty good with the public, eighty percent on the Chiefs, but. Yeah, find that find that three if you're gonna if you're gonna actually get down on this. The, the closing point would be the Rams were the, the the heavy chalk too. I mean, look what happened. Yeah, Detroit heads to Green Bay on Monday Night Football. Aaron Rodgers uh, going to be replacing Nicholas Cage this week. Hopefully, <laughs> they would have been a close your eyes special, but they're laying eleven minus five fifty on the money line. Detroit plus four ten. Forty eight is the total. All right. 
I don't even know what to think here. I, you know, obviously you gravitate towards taking Aaron Rodgers, just you know, taking bounce back. But rookie head coach on the road, getting road double game. digits. You like this system that I've cultivated here. No, and, uh, and we like the check down. I love when your primary targets are two running backs and a tight end. Garbage time is your friend. You know what? It, this game reminds me, and, and Jared Goff. <laughs> maybe we're gonna start calling Jared Goff Tony Danza, because if you remember Tony Danza in the movie, <laughs> he is the garbage picking, field goal kicking. Philadelphia phenomenon. And there's a similar phenomenon going in Detroit where they're totally fine picking up garbage and kicking field goals and covering spreads. Yeah. Let's go, Detroit. Detroit plus eleven. I mean, <laughs> I it's we just saw what their ability to backdoor shit. They have a they have a team built for backdooring. Like just dump off this stuff could, to the running backs. Could be a blowout. And and you know I as much as Green Bay is going to bounce back offensively six and, and zero against the spread following a straight up loss in the yeah, last two years and, and taking Aaron Rodgers after a loss that all that makes sense but the gut handicap something sour you know give me give me some antacids because something's sour in in Green Bay I mean we've seen this the whole season Jermichael Finley came out on talk radio wow. said he doesn't see the hunger in Rodgers to compete anymore Bobby Tunyon. Uh, and Randall Cobb met each other in the locker room. You never want your two hoes meeting each other. <laughs> That's trouble. There's there's a certain dynamic. Ah, that offense looked. Do we think New or- New Orleans has that good of a defense, or did they just was it just a classic like they weren't checked in? No, in yeah, Florida? I mean, I, I think they started out early. New Orleans jumped on them, and they just didn't look back. They were in Florida. It was hot as shit. They weren't in shape. And I, I think they were just, I'm just kind of got behind the eight ball and just packed it in. They were already looking ahead towards the Monday night game, and and maybe they do just light them up. That obviously that's a certain certain possibility here. But man, Detroit, I love all these double digit dogs. Like there's none of none of these double digit dogs am I laying points this early? Because and I'd love to see the advanced numbers, but I feel like if you're making a team a double digit dog. In week two, it's usually off of an overreaction. We're getting, which is hilarious because Houston won by a decent amount. We're getting three rookie head coaches first road game catching double digits. That's going two and three, right? I might just throw that in my teaser. That might just be my teaser. Drew Hogger saying this guy talking about chalk, like almost every single one of his picks hasn't been chalk. L O L. First off, I've taken I don't know who he was talking about. Right, but I can do the math. Yeah, there's we we have we have a nice mix here of public action and sharp action. You nine favorites for you. Okay. And what do you got? You're almost the same. You maybe have one more dog than I me. I have seven favorites. Exactly. Now look at I mean, look at some of these numbers. Houston plus twelve and a half. Is the public all over that? Atlanta. Plus twelve and a half. Sean Eagles plus three and a half. The Forty ers are one of the most bet games on the card. I'm sure every other podcast this guy watches <laughs> is has uh, the Texans to win the division plus thirteen hundred in their pocket. Drew, if you're talking so much shit. Let's. Uh, well, who's your lock? Let's go, baby. <laughs> Let's get you're a little action on it. Locks. All right, that's yeah. it. We we made it to the end. I got nothing else for this game. It's, All right. Uh, it makes me nervous though because I could see like this is the one where you can close your eyes. And uh, and, and well, see Detroit, the crushing. The they have that check downy. I, I don't know. Like golf just seems perfect. Un- and golf played well at Lambo. Up we until- forget it was it wasn't that long ago that golf went into Lambo yeah. and looked pretty decent. Up until last week, uh, if you count the fact that the line touched ten at one point, it was the first time Jared Goff covered as a double digit dog in his career. So hopefully he can do it again. Yes. All right. All right. Uh, time for the lock dog tease brought to you by Prize Picks. <laughs> Promo code SGP for 100% deposit bonus. All right. I got a couple of prize picks over under a player numbers here. Going to give you out four real quick before we get to our lock dog tease, circa millions, and all that good stuff. Dalvin Cook. I'm actually going under mm. 90 and a half rushing yards. I. And maybe I'm sucked in by that Arizona defense. I like that a lot. I mean, did we mention that Chandler Jones had five sacks? I I, (laughs) when I start when I was looking at the box score, I'm like, Jesus Christ! I I know it's he's not rushing the passer, but that D line, that front seven, 
90 and a half sounds a hair high. Uh, Najee Harris, I'm going over 74 and a half. I think a tired mm. Raiders team and Pittsburgh is clearly um, involved in in running the ball. Carson Wentz under 13 and a half rushing yards. Carson Wentz sucks. We know that. Noted sucker of the football. Noted sucker. And then uh, Kareem Hunt over 46 and a half rush yards. Cleveland's not going to need to throw the ball. They can just uh, ram it. Just ram it, Ryan. Just ram it down their throat. So, uh, yeah, that's what I got for the prize picks. And again, put those uh, four players together. 20 could turn into $200 if you hit all of them. Prizepicks.com, promo code SGP. What do you got, Kramer? Well, Sean, uh, I'm going to go with a three banger of o- overs. Terrace, Terrace Marshall over three catches. Noah mm. Fant over four catches. I like that matchup against Jacksonville, and they clearly are going to use him a lot yeah. as long as he's healthy. And then Miles Gaskin, 40 and a half rushing yards against this Bills team. Uh, they were using the shit out of him. That was surprising. And, and I know he was getting some some catches too, but that feels like just the way they want to they're gonna want to play this game, he's gonna get enough carries to go way over that total. Power play. Lock. Dog. Tease right, time. Give me the sound effect, Sean. Yeah. One, One more time, time for the lock dog tease. Happy birthday. Who went first last week? Oh man, we, we got to switch it up from who went first last week. I feel like if anyone I, recalls in the chat. I feel like you forced me to go first. That could be true, or could no? Be. Did I? I feel like I might have. No, gone first. I I went first. You went first. Yeah, you're going first this week. Let's go. All right, let's uh, let's and let's let's double mix it up because we're gonna start with a dog. Oh wow, yeah, you like that, right? Yeah, I, I'm not I'm not gonna get uh super crazy with my dog, but I am gonna take this Miami team. Uh, mm. To get the job done against the Bills, plus one fifty five at home in Florida. I I think they're going to be able to play uh, this Bills team similarly to the Steelers, and, and this time they're at home. So, uh, for the lock, you know, couple grosser games on the card that I thought about locking up, but I like I like this Seattle team too much. I'm Ooh. going against the close your eyes special. I don't give a shit. I like this Seattle team less than a touchdown against this Titans team. I'll say it. I'll, I'll say it proudly. And then for the T's, I think I'm going to do it, Sean. Give me the Detroit Lions up to 17. <laughs> All right. Give me the Atlanta Falcons up to 18 and a half, and give me the Houston Texans. You're up playing to, with fire up to 18 and a half. You Rook, know, two of those are going to hit the rookie head coach. T's. Opening game on the road tease uh, during week two. Sean, go. What's your lock? Lock. Pittsburgh minus five and a half. Uh, I know, mean, we're s- thinking the same because that was the other one I was going to pick. Situationally, that's just such a a, a good spot for them. Uh, I really like the Eagles money line. I'm not going to don't do I, it. I'm Sean. not going to put it in there, Ryan. I'm, I'll save my. Bold Eagles money line play for when their dogs once again after beating the 49ers, after beating the Falcons, mm, when they go okay. in and kick the Cowboys' asses like that. Monday night. I'm gonna go Carolina Panthers. I think this is a perfect spot for them <laughs> at home. Oh, I New or oh, Jameis oh, smelling oh, himself. Our back card. to back uh, yeah, back to back road games. It's just our card is made up already, I think. Okay, so I mean, you got to put Seattle in a tease. Mm. If you're not mm. doing that, I don't know what you're doing. Yep. Denver, mm. <laughs> that's a that's an easy tease. And Pittsburgh, I mean, you could just go straight. Yeah, that's a I don't like putting my lock in my tease, Ryan. Got it. Um, I mean, a lot of these, I guess you shouldn't be teasing over zero. You know, I, I you could join me with some key value crossing fourteen. I'll go. I'll go. Uh, I'll go Houston plus eighteen and a half. I I just don't think they're that bad. Now maybe it's more a statement about the Jags, but again, Tyrod, yeah. he's not horrible. No, he's not horrible at all. All yeah. right, Survivor oh. play though, this is interesting. We have not talked about the Survivor, the Circus Survivor. Obviously, one and zero. Oh. We don't like any of the big favorites. No, not at all. I mean, Cleveland. Uh, are we worried about using Cleveland? Tampa Bay. I mean, that's a division game. Well, I actually, we already used Tampa Bay, so they're out. <laughs> Green Bay. I mean, who knows? Rogers breaks down crying on the sideline. Do we want to save Seattle? I mean, do I we mean, just do we say fucking put the Chargers in there? Cleveland has Chicago next week. 
Cleveland has Arizona, Denver, San Pittsburgh, Diego. Detroit. Oh, Supercharged. yeah. Cleveland has Detroit Supercharged. later in the season. Yeah. What about? I mean, there's a couple fun ones here. Chicago Bears. Don't you want to play the Steelers before? Ooh. Well, Ryan, look up real quick. Uh, who's on Thanksgiving and yeah, who's on Christmas it. Day? Because we cannot we, we use those teams. We haven't prepped at all for this. No. But that's uh, people. People enjoy this behind the scenes look at two super sharp guys crushing the books. All right, we left got and right. Bears, Lions, Bears at Lions. Okay, so maybe we save Bears. Raiders at Cowboys. This is going to be tricky for us. Bills at Saints. Okay, so we can save. We're not picking any. We of can these. save. We can save Raiders or Bears. I mean, I do like Bears two and a half. Or Saints since 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 Cincinnati there. Um. What about a Christmas Day? Do the Steelers mm. play Christmas Day? I feel like a lot of teams are going to get knocked out this week. Like who's the? I mean, I guess people who didn't take Tampa Bay, maybe they do that or Green Bay. All right, we got Browns, Packers, and we got Colts, Cardinals. So maybe we save our. Maybe I think we got to do Pittsburgh. Come on, at home. Yeah, no, let's no, go. I, Big Ben's still healthy. That's the key, yeah. right? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Pittsburgh. M- Steelers, Circus Survivor. All right, so card is obviously our locks and our dogs. I think we all agree. Yeah, I mean, I don't feel great about Miami plus three and a half, but it's a win-win situation. Either I'd have I get the pick right, or I get a shit on the Dolphins. Uh, we could also, I mean, the, oh, and and you like Carolina the plus other, three and a half. The other game that I would have thrown in there as my dog was Houston plus four seventy, but you know. <laughs> That's just me. Uh, yeah. So, la- so, so we both like Carolina, Miami, Seattle, Chargers. Pittsburgh. What's up? Chargers. Yeah. Do we just got to fade Dallas again? Chargers. They're not going to go two and zero against the spread. Chargers. All right. I mean, yes. I, do, I do like Bears, but I think Chargers uh, is the play. Wait, hold on, because I I also like the Bears. The bear is the Bears the smarter hand like. No, because I mean the, the once Demarcus Lawrence went out, that is a tough spot for them. Chargers Lael, favored at home. Lael Collins, though, I mean, I, is he going to be able to uh, block Joey Bosa? Yeah. What are we talking about? I, I mean, here's here's a, a completely independent of my hate of the Cowboys. Yeah. I think these te- both teams have offenses. San Diego has something close to a defense. I I, I can't say that about uh, Dallas yet. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you, uh, it's it. I don't need to be on Andy Dalton. No. No we, one needs to be on Andy Dalton. Let's go. All right, so Pittsburgh for the Circus Survivor millions. Pittsburgh minus five and a half. Seattle Check. minus five and a half. Check. Miami. Dog. Three and a half. Carolina. Dog. Chargers. Dog. Seattle. Dog. Pittsburgh. Dog. The audience. Dog. Putting other shitty sports gambling podcasts in the shine box. Dog. Let's go, baby. Come on. Thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast. Give us that nice uh, five star rating and review. Subscribe on YouTube. Toss us a thumbs up if you're in the chat. Always helps uh, with the algorithm. And and yeah, leave that review. Help us climb the charts. The reviews, the ratings, they make a huge difference. And uh, it's just sweet when we're beating some of these four letter networks or some of these other so called uh, so called touts and sharps. And uh, it's all because of you guys, the listeners. So let's keep keep the domination up. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean stacking the money green, and he is Ryan. I would probably parlay the Falcons money line with the Texans money line just in case. Kramer, let it ride.